Good morning, friends. How's it going? Happy Thursday. Thank you to everybody that's checking in. Uh, welcome to all the new subscribers. Appreciate it. Uh, if you're just popping in, because uh, this showed up somewhere, uh, give us give me a chance and uh, like and subscribe. Uh, if you're into um, all things carpentry and joinery and axes, um, got some stuff going on. I wanted to update everybody with the duplicator. This is the third time I've tried this and it just comes out <laughs> funky. Uh, I'm trying to condense this to where I don't get into a bunch of details, although it's really hard because uh, the uh, duplicator is, it's a detail oriented uh, type of setup. Whether it's a, a middle of the road duplicator like I have or an industrial uh, unit, uh, you have to f you have to figure out the geometry because everything's based on a cutting axis, not necessarily the center axis of the axe itself. In other words, the center axis would be the center of the swing or what's involved in the physics, the actual physics of the ax. Um, what I'm talking about is the cutting axis and that helps you align the uh, master with the blank because obviously it's a duplicator and what happens on one side has to happen on the other. And uh, it's critical on this guy that you line your centers up here, which these are aligned as close as they can be with this this setup. Um, I'm still pleased with this. Uh, I am gonna upgrade this some more. I'm gonna probably swap this out for actual tail stocks. Um, they make uh, tail stocks for uh, CNC's and that's, they're scaled down. They're not like for a big lathe or anything. And then they make smaller um, four jaw chucks for CNC's and I will probably mount those on those dudes. It's, this is actually pretty accurate, but just stuff like this. This is a quarter 20 with a coarse thread and it's just, you know, it, it works. That's, that's what we, that's what we can say. I'd like to see a thread like this. He's got these threads here. So why couldn't you put them over here? Cause this is a pretty critical, pretty critical spot. Um, other than that, uh, I found some really, really nice cutters that the styluses are um, metal, not plastic or nylon, and they are calibrated. Uh, if you put the micrometer on it, um, this is just a few thousandths bigger. I am for your reason. The main problem that I've been running into with this and been scratching my head over um you can see let's see i've got three that uh i've i've done and you know it there's a definite learning curve to this uh, this was the first one and there's no way this one would ever be a handle um it's just trial and error there's really not uh there's really not a whole lot of uh youtube uh somebody like step-by-step step walking you through with this. Um, I'm sure there is something somewhere, but I need to be on this machine figuring it out. So that's just what I've done. And, um, this was number two off of it. And this I could actually sand up into a handle. I've been using scrap wood and the wood that I'm not gonna use for handles, which is up, up tippy top. Whoops, sorry, up tippy top. I'm gonna use that up for uh, uh, masters or, or just experimenting around. Um, this is the uh, this is the third one, which um, it actually a lot of things came together on it. Even though it 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 I finished this with the the course. What what you saw over there is the course bit, and you want to get I have finer bits. And, and knowing when to change bits is kind of key. But these are the bits. Uh, the yellow is a fine bit. 
These are router bits, which I'm going to figure out how to incorporate later on. But buying the router bits, companies don't offer a stylus. That's the drawback to these guys is the router bits don't aren't they don't have a matching stylus. These styluses came with the the, the whole setup and they're OK. Um, but the discrepancies between the two, I don't have time to figure that out. I know that these are calibrated um, together. In other words, and, and even so, this stylus wouldn't work with the green. They are individually calibrated for their color. The orange, which that's an orange, that is their extra course. And so that's what, that's what this is. I was more interested in uh, trying to, just trying to get, get better and understand what's going on. And, and that happened on this handle. And what it came to was uh, the, the idea of the cutting axis. Um, on these guys, I was just laying it out like a lathe and, you know, doing the old X and, uh, and having at it. And that put my cutting axis at an angle, which um, I'm not exactly sure how these came out so well. Um, this one didn't, obviously. These were way off. So I was closer with this. And then this one, I got even closer, um, which, which got me thinking. And so then I, once I finished cutting this, I left for the day and I came back in the morning and I started analyzing what was going on. And my machinist came over. The guy that sharpens my blades is a heck of a machinist. And he got to looking at this and he's like, well, a gun stock or a table leg is a lot more rigid than an ax handle. And he's like, you're getting, you know, in your bay here, you're getting deflection. And so you really can't uh, do a one for one. You can't like take your ax handle and uh, have a finished ax handle and try to copy it because you'll end up too small. If it moves, you're gonna dig in. Or if you're pushing because you're, you've got your hands on the stylus and you're running the stylus over the master and your cutter's doing the business, um, but you're gonna get deflection down and you're gonna get deflection from side to side. And he's like, so you need to factor that in. Well, uh, not only was my cutting axis not nuts on, um, there was that. I realized then and there that I was gonna have to make oversized templates. I was prepared to make uh, templates anyway because my templates, here they are over here, my templates for the sander were really basic and simple. Uh, I just had a plywood template that I could arrange on a, any given board. And then it was pretty much all by eye, either taking it home and doing it by hand or taking it out on the two by 72 sander and, and going to town. And, and I was I'm getting great results with that. The problem is uh, if you have a lot of handles to make, you're literally reinventing the wheel every time you go to the sander. And there's too many steps involved in roughing this. You know, you cut out the perimeter and then you, uh, you get your edges right. And then you lay out again and you cut, you cut the uh, sides off to reduce the thickness. And then you take it to the sander. My understanding so far is that with this particular duplicator, uh, it's not going to increase speed, but it's going to, I guess, per se, it's not going to increase speed per se. It will eventually, but what it does is it takes the complication of hour after hour after hour of sitting out there on that sander reinventing the wheel it's these after you spend time working on your templates everything is a known entity you can change models throw it on the duplicator and you know what's going to come off of the duplicator and then when it comes off of the duplicator it's basically down to hand sanding and you're done 
Now that sounds like that would uh, take less time. I think, yeah, some. I think we'll pick up some time. Is it gonna be picking up, is it gonna cut um, it? I guess it would cut it in half when you factor everything into it. The prep on the bandsaw and all of the stuff you have to do to get to the sander. Um, and then you have your roughing portion on the sander. Then you have uh, the uh, contouring on the 2x72 and then you switch over to your drum sander. So there are some steps that are going to be eliminated. Uh, I have yet to really calculate how it's going to affect the time. All I know is that I put one on that, it comes out just like the one that's coming after it. And I can focus on routing it and brain power saved. So anyway, uh, back to this. So basically, um, once I cut this out, there's no, there's no way to really put measure off of anything. Uh, to, to put, a, put a, a bona fide center axis like that's on this double bit. This double bit has its axis, because this is going to be an octagon, it has uh, center lines all the way around it. And layout has to be perfect on this in order to get a, a good octagon. Um, but I think you'll find, the more I've been getting into this, um, I hafted this with center lines on it, and I did this by hand. Uh, and it's, it's really, it actually made it easier because you're working, you can work, you can work spots and you can have a reference line and you can have a visual instead of just nothing here and you're just imagining the shape and there's nothing wrong with doing it by eye. But I've, I've, I've really found that the lines are very helpful. I use a, uh, the smallest Sharpie that they make. And if you've got your center lines on your ends, you can always bring your lines back. Either using the kite string like I did in the short or I have a, a piece of aluminum, a, a, just a piece of flat stock aluminum and a four foot straight edge and, and some various different straight edges. Um, you kind of have to play with it and come up with your own uh, mode of doing it. But um, it becomes all about the center lines, especially if you're gonna make something for somebody on a repeated basis and um, I just find, I mean, pure and simple, I just find the, the lines easier. Um, so basically, um, you start your lines uh, before you start cutting your contour. And so you need a, you need a straight edge that you can measure, measure down off of. So basically, with this particular model, um, I had to come up with a, uh, let me find the template. It's right on the template, but you get what I'm saying. So if you start with your straight piece of wood, you know, straight in one edge, if it's, if it's S2S or S3S, depending on what it is, you need an, a straight edge that you, you can measure off of, something that will bring you an axis down. And then, um, basically, what I did was I took my best handle and I figured out, I tried to figure out where, and I think I moved the axis, actually, I did. That's not the axis. Um, this, is, this is the pattern for this, and that's where I moved the axis. So let's pretend like this is still a board. What I wanted was, I tried to divide it in half as much as I could. Uh, so, and this is actually gonna be the blank for the handle that I'm talking about. I may alter it a little bit because uh, everything came out a little bit smaller. But I want to, on my blank, I want to have uh, 
enough material there so the duplicator will work properly, but I don't want to be hogging tons of material. There's already enough waste of material with handle making, and I'm trying to minimize that. Um, so anyway, we get back to our, our turning axis, and, and here I go with details again, but it really is important if you're considering a duplicator or if you're wanting to just take your make handle making to, I think it's the next level, uh, I really do. Um, doing it by eye, it certainly works and it's awesome and I've done a lot of handles by eye. But I have found a comfort level with these lines uh, that I haven't had with just doing it by eye. And I think there's a lot of value in doing it by eye because it gets you looking at shapes and uh, symmetry. So that's, that's good. But I tell you, when, when you've got a smaller space and you know you're dead center on your handle, this is a lot easier to work with a draw knife and your files or whatever it is you use, your spoke shape or whatever it is. When you can compartmentalize this and then you're looking down, it's just easier to bring the symmetry than it is with nothing there. Um, so, I'll get off of that soapbox. So basically, um, everything is based off of your turning axis. And I marked my center axis on this original blank. And I said to myself, self, self. Okay, my first one, I'm gonna make an eighth of an inch over. And my next one, I'm gonna make a quarter of an inch over. So I basically came over and took my dividers and set the dividers and just traced around it. But remember, you've got to keep your eye parallel to your cutting axis. And the, anyway, here's what's going on. I will make this, I'll try to go into less detail. I, I, that's been, that's been the whole problem this, the third time. I'm still, I'm still like telling you how to build a watch. Um, so anyway, um, <coughs> I couldn't do these one at a time and the process was pretty long actually because I had to allow for uh, mounting blocks in these, which is what the uh, duplicator is going to grab onto the uh, handle is probably the end butt of the handle is probably somewhere in there and this will get cut i think the uh the duplicator stops right about here so this will get cut off here but uh i had to carefully make each template on a quarter inch piece of plywood and allowing for all of that and then lay that out on the stock here, and then um, mount these, lay them out to where I could actually know that they sit in the uh, duplicator correctly, and uh, readjust the duplicator for the longer um, master and uh, pattern, or not master and pattern, yeah, yeah, master and uh, duplicate, blank. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, so, um, that's kind of where things are at. And so this has to happen with all of the handles. Uh, so, having gone through this now, it won't take as long. But it is, it is quite a task. And the more time that I spend with this, the better the... Uh, the better the duplicate coming off of the duplicator is going to be, pure and simple. It means less work at each station. So uh, I'm really pleased at the way it's coming out, but it's been a lot of uh, figuring out. Um, you know, you think, well, I got a duplicator. Oh, handles are coming. I got material, which, which we do have material. It's beautiful. I love it. But... Um, everything has to be known. 
And if you notice this giant hole in the duplicating table, this is for dust collection. We have to, before we can turn this thing loose in the shop, I have to get, uh, no pun intended, I've got to get, uh, you got to control the dust somehow. Um, so far, I've been doing it outside just because it's ridiculous. Um, and so things are popping. Um, I'm really happy that, uh, I just threw that down there. Um, the hickory came back from the kiln. It's, it's pretty wonderful. I wish I had more. He does have four that he said weren't dry enough, but we're doing it low and slow. Uh, tomorrow, this next tree leaves for the kiln. Um, and yeah. Got five more trees leaving, gonna be Saturday out at the sawmill. Um, looking at the trees, I'm not sure when we're gonna cut them, um, but they're bought and paid for. So uh, it's exciting to be sourcing my own hickory and whatever else is coming down the pipe. So anyway, uh, these, oh, I forgot to mention. So now uh, still have my center lines. I just busted these down on the sander. Now these are gonna go home and get doted over like the octagon did. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have our calipers and uh, our nice files and uh, we're gonna take our time and we will be making sure that uh, this is as perfect as I can make it, as, or it will be as perfect as I can make it. Um, and the nice thing about these is these will uh, be able to transfer to uh, any duplicating machine, basically, now that all this stuff is, is figured out. So um, good things coming, good things coming. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. I had something fall out of the sky yesterday and I'm not even gonna mention it because I don't wanna jinx it, but it will be, if it pans out, it's gonna be an incredible shot in the arm. I'm waiting to go look at it. And uh, that's, that's all I can say. I wanna thank again, Andrew, Mr. Butler from Butler Outdoors because, yeah, I'm gonna need this kit. <laughs> and Jay and Janelle, thank you. My stickers are here. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. What would we do without this community? I mean, holy moly. I mean, the, the support that people offer each other, let's keep that up. Let's be kind and happy because it's contagious and, uh, I'll see you on the next one. Take care.